I was perusing Facebook Marketplace the other day with my missus and she commented to me, wouldn't it be absolutely fantastic if we had a truck so that I can go and pick up all of these random things that I find? Say no more, love. So I head straight to eBay, type in truck, and crucially, sort by lowest price, and, well, <laughs> this, is, this is what you get. This is what it looks like when you leave a 1989 Peugeot 509 truck in a field completely covered in a bush for what we're guessing is about 10, 15, maybe even 20 years. Uh, it is crusty. And uh, I don't know if you see this bush behind me, but this area has literally just been cleared and these bushes were all the way over this truck. This was completely buried. So this is a, a very interesting buy. <laughs> I don't think there is quite literally anything left of this truck. It is, <laughs> look at that. Look. <laughs> this truck is complete. <laughs> God, he got attacked there by some flying thing. Uh, this truck is complete. I mean, when they say complete, I mean, it was complete when parked, but I'm not sure as holes and rust like that necessarily constitutes complete. Uh, I mean, should we just pretend I never opened that door? Yeah, I mean, look, there's just holes absolutely everywhere. We've got moss growing all up the front of it. The bonnet, if it opens, let's have a look. That looks, that looks complete to me. Um, doesn't look as though anything's kind of been eaten away either, like the wiring or we're just missing a battery there, obviously. And now, amazingly, the tires are actually holding air. So hopefully this will be really quite easy to drag on a truck. Famous last words. Oh, the tires are holding air. Brilliant. Right. What we've got to do now is we actually have to get this on a recovery truck and take it back to mine. She might be stuck in there. It's not in gear, is it? Yeah, so I'm just checking. Here she goes. Back spin, so that's good. Uh, we've got her on there, three wheels spin. That driver's side front doesn't spin. Uh, obviously, it's going to pose a problem now for when we get to the other side. Uh, how do you take it off? But <laughs> deal with that when we get to it, I suppose. Okay, very, very annoyingly, this camera for some reason decided to die just as we were getting it off the truck. But you can see the truck is off the truck. <laughs> so, so all he did is he backed in here and then hooked on with Claudia with a tow rope and some good old trusty Quattro power managed to pull this old girl off the trower, uh, off the, 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 the truck. <laughs> I was hoping that when this hit the tarmac that would unseize but it didn't so I'm gonna have to see to this wheel as the first thing to do because now she's just stuck in the way and I can't really get my cars on when I get home from work and now as I stand here just looking at this I'm having a real what have I done moment why do I always do this to myself <laughs> have I really got nothing better to do Oh. And so here in the UK, these kind of car-based trucks that are lower to the ground are actually fairly rare. Most of the trucks we have over here are, you know, based on SUVs or, you know, they're much bigger vehicles. This is more akin to the kind of thing that you'd find in Australia, something that those guys over there would call a ute. So this is really just some kind of like weird <laughs> French-Australian hybrid kind of thing. Good day, mate. 
You want to hop in a ute and we'll go and throw a couple of baguettes on the barbie. <laughs> So the first thing I've got to do is get this wheel unseized because I have been reliably informed by my missus that that thing is not staying there. <laughs> you know how it is. So uh, get this wheel off, not, not 17. It's not a 19 either. What? Is this even metric? Or is this imperial? 20 mil? No, nope. 21, surely. What? 22, no way, 24, 24 mil wheel nuts, 24, I cannot believe that these tyres are holding air, get off, get off. So if you were a rusty old Peugeot, where would you let me jack you up? Probably if I jacked it up on the correct side, wouldn't it, to begin with, oh, stone in my knee. Come on. Oh, what a surprise. Rust. We have got just one super seized disc. Against all better judgment, all I'm going to do is just spray liquid hacksaw on the discs and pads. <sighs> yeah. Okay, that wasn't too bad. My word, it's crusty under here, look. That's not dirt, that's rust. <laughs> oh. Yes. Okay. This is good news. Do you reckon this truck's got any brake fluid in it still? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. But now this spins freely. Sounds like there might be a little bit of grit in there, but it spins. Oh no, it's just the disc brake cover rubbing against the disc. <laughs> Lovely, look at that. You, am I hungry for lunch? Yeah, yeah why? Well. well, what? No, 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 I haven't eaten anything today. What have I hit? What have I eaten? Sugar on the countertop. Gaping hole where the fifth donut should be. <laughs> it was me, I ate a donut. So this is a 1989 Peugeot 504 pickup truck. This is a car based truck. This was based on the Peugeot 504. And what's strange about these things is that I'm pretty sure that the production of the pickup started either slightly after or just before the 504 car went out of production. Don't ask me why, but this is, uh, this is what we've got. And I think, you know, the first thing that we can notice is the fact that they actually made these out of tracing paper. Now, obviously this one was sat in that field. Um, I mean, it was a field when you saw it a moment ago, but the bushes that you could see in the background are actually completely and utterly covering this truck. So those trees had grown up and all the way over, they'd had a massive great excavator in there that actually turned that back into a field. So, you know, this has been sat outside with leaves on it, moisture on it. I mean, you can see that here's all, that's all the moss, uh, but this is just so incredibly flaky and, you know, it's just, you can hear it, it's just crunchy almost everywhere. Um, but look, you only have to come down here to see that there is nothing left of this outer seal. Now, that's the inner seal there, and that is, well, you can see it flexing. This is, uh, you know, this is what we've got. It's, there's, there's basically, basically nothing, nothing left of this truck whatsoever. In the wheel wells there, it doesn't look too bad, but I can kind of assure you that I think underneath some of the layers it is bad. If you cut in here, you can see that all of these shocks, they're rusty. All of this stuff down there, that's all completely gone. And again, look in here, you can just see where all the different layers, I mean, look at this, look. Oh. 
all good. Um, again, seal down here. I mean, I could pull that away now if I wanted to, and I do want to. I've just done it. There you go, look at that. That is what's left of the seal. Now, it's just a massive gaping hole. So, in terms of bodywork, not the best. Uh, in fact, this truck is so bad, I am even wondering if it's technically past saving. That rust just continues all the way down this seal. All of it, look, it's got, you've got the same at the back here. Look at that, look. Uh, now the bed, yeah, I mean, I'm pushing on there, it's flexing, it's, it feels like my finger, my thumb is just about to go through it. And then you've got the tailgate. That is cool, that Peugeot. Right? It would be a shame to, to scrap this truck, but I don't know, we'll have to, we'll have to see, won't we? Let's see if it, let's see if this opens. It's got a lovely, piece of added wood there. Oh, oh yes. Oh, lovely. Well, at least that still opens. And I like what the old boy has done on here at some point. He's just welded on or bolted on strips of metal and then welded on these bits of what looked like rebar to keep some kind of tonneau cover attached to the back. So we've got a spare, it's flat. Don't know what I was expecting. Uh, and then just some cool kind of ball bar, some cool kind of thing here, I don't know what that is. But this all looks, that is all homemade. This is all just angle section. And then if we get in here, oh yeah, I mean, it doesn't smell particularly great. Some of these cobwebs are fantastic. And what was pretty cool about this is the fact that the keys were left in the ignition the entire time. So I do remarkably have keys for this truck. Uh, wow, there you go. That says everything you need to know there. You can see the floor through the floor. I don't really want to sit in here to be honest. So what do you reckon we're saying? for mileage. According to the clock there, 97,154 miles. And uh, who knows why this truck was parked up. The property that I pulled this truck off of, that you saw there, um, so it was an old boy that had died. The guy that I bought the truck off, he just bought all the land. I don't, I'm not sure if this car was necessarily parked up because there was anything wrong with it. So maybe this truck is actually kind of kind of good to go engine wise and that once it um you know once i get it get into it a bit but who knows but we've got a four speed uh, manual that looks like a four speed uh yeah i mean i can see some electrical connectors down there that are all unplugged so that's pretty cool uh brake pedal i mean that's no there's no brake pedal Accelerator stays down. Clutch, no, nope. no clutch pedal. Not that you can push with your hands anyway. Dare I push it with my foot? Oh, oh, hello. Oh, did I just bring the clutch back? Right, well, that's just going to be leaking fluid out everywhere now because a hose 100% would have snapped. What's the rest of the floor like? Listen, listen. <laughs> but this is a 2.3 litre Peugeot diesel. This is has the engine code XD2, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it all looks there. And I suppose the big question is, is it locked up? Because if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you'll know that me and locked up engines, we're now like that, which is <laughs> well, the fan spins, <laughs> but that's because the fan is on a clutch, so that's not very indicative. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get a have to get a bar down there on the crank nut. So let's have a look if she's got any oil. She has got oil. It's way, way overfilled. 
No fuel of anything, eh? Doesn't look like much. Mm, no, there's quite a bit of. I think there's quite a bit of water in there. Oh, good. Oh, good. Right. Now, if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I am not a competent mechanic. I literally just have a Haynes manual for this engine. I have a basic set of tools, but to make up for that, I have a level of enthusiasm for this sort of stuff that rivals. I don't know, a puppy eating a slice of bacon for the first time. The moment of truth, please don't be locked up. Please, please, please don't be locked up. Oh, free as a bird. Oh, let's just try that again. I can't have to see. Get in there. Oh, yes. Oh God, after the struggle that I had with the Rover, where I never got it unseized in the end. <laughs> this is an absolute delight. Oh, oh, it's not seized. It's not seized. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, let's just get it through. Yeah, ah, oh. there might have been a little bit of a ridge there actually, but that's, yeah. cool, it's got, it's got compression. For sure. Oh. So I think this has got a 23 to 1 compression ratio. And so one of the things that I didn't mention that, oh yeah, oh she's got compression. One of the things I didn't mention about this engine is that this isn't the turbo diesel, this is just a naturally aspirated diesel. So we've gone for absolute farm spec on this engine. Um, oh God, that's such a result. So I would like to see inside the top here, isn't it? How does that come off? Ooh, what's that plug for? It's just a random plug, just chilling out. How do you take that off? Is this screw off? I've never seen anything like it. Ah, yes, yes it does. No, it doesn't. It spins, but it doesn't unscrew. What? Am I really going to have to do this? Am I damaging that irreparably? Probably. <laughs> when in doubt, just spray it. Just spray the engine on the outside with loads of very flammable liquid. So that when you do eventually start it, you burn to a crisp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. This doesn't make any sense. You thought I was joking about having a Haynes manual. <laughs> this is the most basic of jobs. How do you take the oil filler cap off? Oh, it just pulls out. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if you can see in there, but it's very clean. I'm not seeing any rust whatsoever. There's still some oil in there. Nice, nice. Here, check this out, look. Well, some of us are working hard. Others are very much not working hard. That cat has no concept of dirt is an absolute animal. So I think next I might just see if she turns over. I think that's what we do. I think stick a battery in. So I've just gone and pulled this battery out of the Rover and uh, I'm gonna be very surprised if this battery has enough of the amps to get this engine going but we can try okay is this battery gonna fall through the battery tray is that rusted enough all right right okay now this is obviously going to be an instant fire with all of this dry material sitting about anything Not a single noise, not a relay clicking, not, 
no fire, that's for sure, in here. Sorry, lad. I need to get in here. Nothing. Ah, lights. Lights on the dash. Okay, cool. Hang on, what's happened? No, go back, okay. Glow plug light came on, then went off. That's good news, but have we got any fire now? You probably shouldn't be in there, lad, if we are gonna have a fire. I have actually got a fire extinguisher. It looks like a watering can, but it's actually a fire extinguisher. Any fire? No, remarkably, with all of this gubbins knocking about. Right, let's see if it cranks. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is where I start going, ah, and where do I go from here? Maybe this battery simply doesn't have enough juice. It is only a small little battery for a petrol car. Hmm. Maybe I robbed the one out of Claudia. And I think, oh, that battery's just out of the way. Let's just do the old classic. Give the starter motor a tickle. Tickled. New battery from Claudia. Now the key's stuck. Okay, here we go. Oh. Nothing. Oh. Okay, now this is where I very quickly find myself butting right up against the limits of my knowledge. So it's just clicking, not doing anything. Does that mean a bad starter motor? Is that the reason that this truck was parked up? I really can't be bothered if it is that starter motor because if you think getting parts for an Audi RS6 is difficult, like I've recently found out, this is on another level. <laughs> I think what I am gonna do though, regardless, is I'm just gonna pull some of the cables there off of, off of the starter and just clean them up because they are a little bit rusty. If I show you in there quickly, you can see that you know they're not they're not in the greatest condition so i think if i pull those off clean up the starter there a little bit and then just go again because it could still be a bit of a a bit of a gammy connection down there excuse me okay so i cleaned up all of the terminals on the battery i've cleaned up this terminal here at the solenoid uh, and I've cleaned up the earth down there to the engine block. So let's, uh, let's see if this does anything different. Oh, oh yes. Yes, <laughs> the starter's not bad. The starter isn't bad, she just turned over. It was just really dirty terminals, probably just some kind of earthing problem wasn't there or something <laughs> okay so now that i know that the starter is good um what i don't want to do is uh, actually try and start the engine because you know we've got 15 year old diesel in here uh, 15 year old oil that was very very thin i imagine there is some moisture that's probably crept up through the exhaust in there at some point maybe down past the rings uh so i don't want to actually get it going until i've changed changed the Oil, change the oil filter, which is very accessible. It's literally just there. That's cool. Uh, and then this thing here, this is the fuel filter. Uh, so this all comes apart and I'm gonna replace the fuel filter and then I'm gonna hook up a nice clean fuel supply there. I mean, I know this old Peugeot uh, naturally aspirated engine will probably chug through absolutely anything you throw at her, but you know, I wanna give her the best start. She's not in the best nick, is she? So, you know, let's treat her just a little bit. Come on. You've never seen anyone use a spanner like this. Oh, you have now. Oh, well, just lost that bolt forever. Horrible old diesel falling out everywhere. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Happy birthday and ah, nice. Oh, lovely. 
Lovely. I mean, there is a bucket under there, but questionable whether any of that actually went in the bucket. Just clean a load of this out. I picked the old girl up, the new Bosch fuel filter. Only the best, only the best. Oh, it's actually the next day now and the heavens absolutely opened last night and I was laying in bed this morning because the rain woke me up just thinking, oh, what a result, free car wash. New. <laughs> Zero percent of this car has been washed. Oh, it's supposed to absolutely lash it down again soon, but fear not because I have my not economically viable windbreaker rain coaty anoraki thing to protect me from the element. Look at that. I think there's a hood in here as well. You can get these on my store by going to noteconomicallyviable.com. Uh, link in the description. You could go grab yourself one of these jackets and just advertise to the rest of the world quite how much your project car is bankrupting you. Right, where did we get to? Fuel filter, changed, oil change. <sighs> what? Little bit won't even go in. Eight mil? No, nine mil bit. What? Eight mil. Too big. Oh, seven? Seven. What? Seven's too small. Eight's too big. Oh, that's square. Huh. I don't have a square tool bit sump plug thinger. Sponsor me. Don't buy anything else, don't buy anything else, don't buy anything else. Ooh. Wow. Oh, not hoping now. You complete moron. Oh no, there's, oh, there's all sorts of liquid in there. That's my ratchet. Oh, oh wow, that is very watery. It's old oil filter off <laughs> upside down, so it's definitely not going to spill everywhere. <laughs> huh. Actually, didn't spill everywhere. <laughs> What is this one? This is a Kuniakt. Kuniakt. And replace it with lovely Bosch again. Nothing but the best for my sweetheart. And if we remember our lesson from earlier, we know that this just pops off. Ah, yeah. Sticking some Napa 10W40 semi synthetic oil in. And I got this stuff because I just asked on the phone when, they, when I ordered it for the cheapest 10W40 that you own. Should just take five litres. No, 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 I haven't put the drain plug back in. Jesus. <laughs> what? A rookie error that was. <laughs> I hadn't put the drain plug back in. I just, just caught it. It just started to come out. I managed to get the drain plug from in the cab, put the new washer on it, and get it installed just as the oil started coming out. If you had any doubts as to whether I was a complete noob or I was just having you on, nah. <laughs> what a moron. 
What a complete moron. I cannot believe I did that. Oh, wow, it's hot. It is so hot. I think I'm gonna have to, you know? I think I'm gonna have to go for it. Started as a joke, but now it's actually really quite practical. Air yeah, the old pits out. Also, did somebody say tan lines? All right, so what I've done here is I'm moving on to fuel. So this is the inlet into the fuel filter. That usually goes and connects down there and then that goes into the tank. What I've done is I've removed it and then just done a setup like I did on the Rover, if you watch that video. Uh, just a whole load of hose, basically, that I'm just gonna rig up to this five litre, very small jerry can. Um, but this end, in the jerry can, I've got my primer here, and this will take the fuel from the can down this line in to the fuel filter here, and then you have to bleed this separately, I believe. And there's a little bleed screw there, so I'm gonna try and crack that, see if that's not completely seized. And then you have to push this, you pump that, and then diesel should kind of go through and shabab -ba 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 bit hopeful but I did pick up this diesel injector cleaner from Halford so I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of this to the fuel can in the hopes that it just kind of does some tickling to the injectors and the injectors go just a little bit a little bit nicer okay come on just crack off nicely oh yeah sweet and then just pump apparently Oh no, you're gonna need to put the end in the actual fuel can, don't you? Otherwise, <laughs> you're not gonna be pumping a single thing. It's air. I mean, there's a lot of fuel hose here, but. Oh, so I can hear the air coming out of that bleed nipple. There it goes. There it goes. All over the battery, so that's quite cool. And then what we want is just a little bit of Peugeot main dealer approved coolant. Being sure to spill as much of it as he possibly can everywhere. And I think we should probably check the air filter for mouse houses, shouldn't we? Okay, well. That's a little bit, um, so I just pulled the air filter off there, and that is the rest of the air filter housing. And that is the gloopiest, thickest oil. It's very deep. Now I know some air filters you're supposed to kind of oil up a bit, but surely not like that. What does this mean? Okay, so I just consulted the Haynes manual and apparently this is um, a thing. This is an oil bath type of oil filter. I have just didn't know these things existed until this very instant. Um, you can see in there that's, well, I don't know if you can see in there. I can. Oh, there you go. You can see in there that's unobstructed the wire mesh filter bit. So, uh, get off. Um, so that's cool. You're supposed to clean this out and then fill it with fresh engine oil, but I literally just put all of the engine oil into the engine, you know, where it normally goes. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is just, for our purposes, pretend that I haven't seen this, didn't know that existed, and that that oil is all completely fine, reassemble it, and then we might be ready to just crank on her and see what, if anything, happens. We've got fuel, we've got air, there's compression, got no idea if the injectors are blocked. There's probably still gammy fuel in the injectors, but we're gonna pump fresh fuel through. There's a new oil filter, fuel filter, fresh oil. Uh, the air cleaner looks unimpeded. Uh, nothing for it really, is there? Battery connected. Let's just see what, if anything, happens. Oh, I don't want to sit in here. Blech. Go on, girl. No way. 
Oh, she fired. She fired. That's cool. That is cool. Right, let's try it again. Let's give it a little bit of throttle this time. Oh, how cool. <laughs> Go on, girl. Go on. Woo! She's on. She's running. How cool is that? 15 plus years sat in a field and with a little bit of tickling, a little bit of love and attention, she is running. Does she idle? She idles. Ah, oh, trusty old Peugeot diesel. Yes! How cool is that? Ah, oh, so cool. Sounds quite good. Little bit stuttery, but I imagine she's just blowing the cobwebs out. Have we got any smoke? Oh my God, she does sound like a tractor. Of course, she's not even blowing any smoke. Little bit. <laughs> I tell you what, some people like golf. Some people like swimming. Some people are into knitting. I can't think of anything better than rolling around in the dirt trying to get rusty old pieces of junk working again. This is so much fun. Smoke's less than my Rover. Okay, what are we saying on the dials? Anything? No, nothing. Oh, the indicators work. That's cool. There's no lights on on the dash. I, I mean, I don't suppose that really actually means much, to be honest. I've done a thing. I've done a thing. S smoke, a little bit of smoke. Uh, yeah, it's a bit smoky, but what do we expect? Okay, so she's been idling now for about 10 minutes. The idle got a little bit nice, so it is still a little bit lumpy. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know how to adjust the, the injection pump or anything. I can certainly look into it, but she's, uh, she's running really nicely. There aren't any leaks underneath. All the fluids are staying in nicely. Building temperature, very warm. There's no lights on the dash. It's such a shame that the body of this car is quite literally disintegrating around a very, very tough and hardy engine. But it does mean now that I need some kind of brakes. Now this is that front right caliper. I need a way to unseize this. Now obviously I've used half a can of liquid persuasion on it. I think I might just have to disassemble it, see what I can work out. Hit it a few times with a hammer, throw some fire at it. Yeah. Right, so I, I went at this, and so you have to take these pins out here to get the pads to release. This pin is it's more stuck than I can be bothered to try and actually put proper, eff proper effort into removing. This one uh, comes out. Couldn't get that to work anyway, so what I've done, <laughs> I tried a few methods of just kind of releasing the cylinder. So I just hit it with a bit of heat, just kind of on this outside. So obviously now I've screwed up all of the seals, I imagine. Um, what I ended up actually doing is getting a ball joint spreader and then just kind of going in gently like that and then from that side. And it has actually released it to the point where it's working as a caliper, probably not, but to the point where this gap is now wide enough to actually fit over the disc brake and not bind, yeah, it, it actually clears it now. So uh, I think what we'll just a proper, proper redneck engineering really, isn't it? All right, so the caliper is now back on. All I wanna do now is just, well, I mean, I'm acting as though we've got a brake pedal. But I think I just wanna, oh wow, there's brake fluid in there. It's quite the colour though. I'm just going to top it up a little bit. I found a couple of 
already opened brake fluid things, which uh, I don't really want to put in anything else, but more than happy to top up here. And amazingly, the bleed nipple on that caliper actually cracked off. Let's see what we've got in the way of brake pedal. I really should trim this bush. <laughs> okay. Oof. Oh, it's nothing. There's nothing. Oh, it just went. It just went. Okay, what have we got? Oh, it just goes to the floor. Obviously, if I give it a few pumps, see if it comes back. Open this up a little bit more. Has that gone down? That has gone down a bit. Oh. Oh, okay. I think the bleed nipple is blocked because I just undid it and a lot of pressure came out. I'm taking it out. Let me just. Give that another go with the bleed nipple completely out. <laughs> Fluid eventually did start coming out of there, so it's a bit bled. The brake pedal's come back around a little bit, and well, you can. There's a ridge on the. There's a ridge there on the disc. That's just pure corrosion. There's no like wiping it off, but it's still free. It's probably still seized up, I imagine but it's all kind of plugged back in and there is a bit of a brake pedal. So I'm wondering, should I just go for a little bit of forwards and backwards action? See if we've got a clutch and uh, just see stuff, I suppose. Right, so the wheel's back on her. She's now down on the ground. Got my fuel system hooked up in through there, <laughs> into the petrol can. And I think all I'm gonna do is take on a maiden voyage, maybe go back a little bit and then drive up the driveway just a little bit, see how she handles that. Oh, oh my God, it's so minging in here. Also, I cannot see a single thing. Oh, I'll just put my foot directly through the floor. Oh, on the button. On the button, that's cool. Okay, let's see if we've got any gears, shall we? Where's first? Okay. Here we go, let's see if there's any clutch. No. No, nothing. Oh, here we go. We've got a clutch. <laughs> oh, we're off. First drive in 15 years. Woo! Have we got any brakes? Well, we actually have brakes. Oh, this is cool. Right. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can go backwards. Oh no, I've lost the clutch. I can hear something bad happening. No, hang on. Where's reverse? How do I get it over there? Four, okay, hang on. First, second, third, fourth, and then there should be another. Does not want to know about reverse. Doesn't want to know about reverse, can't get it in. Oh, the gear lever's disintegrating. Doesn't want to push down, doesn't want to come up. Oh no, well, that's the gear lever just gone. <laughs> uh, we still go forwards. Oh no. Are we going to be pushing this car back? Yeah, I think we're going to have to push it back. Yeah, <laughs> we're pushing it back. <laughs> she moved though. She got going under her own, under her own steam, and she rolls. But we have to go push her back. All right, ladies and gents, I have tried for quite a bit of time now to get this truck into reverse with absolutely no luck. The engine's still running nicely. I did drive her up here, uh, and now she's kind of stuck <laughs> in between ears. I think I'm gonna have to tow her out. That was still a very, very cool exercise though, taking this car out of the field, it's been sitting there 15 plus years, giving her a little bit of love and affection just to get her to drive a little bit and to start again. 
even though we didn't go very far. If you've enjoyed this video, it'd mean the world to me if you could just help support the channel a little bit just by hitting subscribe or if you fancy any of the merch that I've got, there's a link in the description below. I have got another video on the RS6 coming soon as well, so see you soon. <laughs>